How you doing fam bam? This is Chris Mizo here with another video on how to build a PC from scratch. Especially if you never built a PC before, maybe you're a little bit intimidated and you don't know exactly where to start. But this is a guide on exactly how to put a shopping list together of PC parts on exactly how to build a PC from scratch. I'll make it as simple as possible and it will be easy. There is many different reasons why you can build a PC. Maybe you're a student and you need it for zoom you need it for your personal homework that's what i would tell my parents but most people want to build a pc because they want a gaming rig maybe they need to build a pc for work purposes maybe they do a lot of rendering but there is many different reasons why you can build a pc and those are just the very few i will show you several websites that you can go on on how to build your pc one of the very first ones that I will show you here is a power supply calculator because you need to know exactly how much output your PC will push. And for me, a good rule of thumb of building a PC is you want it at least 100 watts over because maybe you will upgrade a component in the future where you'll need the extra wattage and you do not want to max out a power supply to its full capabilities because not only will it burn out your power supply faster, but you're gonna just spend more money on another power supply that you could have prevented in the first place just by buying a more powerful power supply. But you and I will be shopping together and you will see exactly how to put together a list for building a PC, regardless if you're looking for it as a student, as a gamer, or a productivity user, it will be a really easy guide. If you get lost in any shape, way, or form, make sure you comment down below and I will try to help you the best way that I can. And also make sure you check out the card above to see if building a PC is right for you because maybe it's better for you to get a pre-built system. You also got to figure out exactly what you want to use the PC for because you can't just say that you want to use it just as a student. If you want to use it as a student and as a gamer, make sure you build it as a gaming machine. If you're using it for productivity use and you're using it for gaming use, you wanna make sure you build a productivity machine because it does make a huge difference depending on what you wanna build it for. Of course, the more favorable option is if you can build two separate rigs, whether you wanna use one specifically for work purposes and you can also build another PC for gaming. Of course, that's the more favorable option and the most expensive option, but if you're looking for both, it can be done. But I will explain each step thoroughly and I hope this guide does help you. So without further ado, let's get started, fam bam. I know you guys want to build a PC just as bad as I do. So Newegg's a really popular site to be able to purchase all the PC parts that you want. And first off, I gotta say, if you're thinking about building a PC, I would like to say congratulations. That's probably one of the best decisions that you can make especially if you're converting over from using a laptop and it is very useful for your workflow purposes or if you're into gaming it is one of the best and enjoyable things that you can ever do personally in my opinion i think it is one of the best decisions a person can make because this is a type of skill that you won't forget and it's really an enjoyable process and i really want to help you with that so one of the first things I would typically recommend is you need to add some Arctic Silver. And Arctic Silver is a thermal paste. You're gonna usually use that for the CPU for when you put it in. But just make sure you add it and it's very easy to forget. You can imagine how frustrating it can be to be building a PC and now you forgot to add some thermal paste. So you wanna add this to your cart. Well, the real purpose of this is it's just some thermal paste that goes on top of the CPU, which keeps it nice and cool. Of course, if I personally like Arctic Silver, I've used it for many, many years on every single build I've ever had. Of course, I've heard great things also about Arctic Cooling MX2, and I'm not sponsored by any of these, so it's something I just highly recommend and it's a great insurance i mean when you think about it it's five dollars and 80 cents usd it is great insurance for your cpu the last thing you want to deal with is a overheated cpu just because you didn't want to use the thermal paste and most cpus that you purchase do not come with thermal paste like they used to they used to come in this little plastic 
uh, packet where it was this white ceramic paste where that was just enough to keep your CPU cool for the year. But of course I can always go deeper in that in a whole nother subject. And when I do, I'll make sure to make a card right above here. But let's proceed. And the first thing you're gonna wanna look at is a CPU. If you're looking for a CPU, specifically if you're looking for a CPU for work purposes, I would recommend something such as a Thread Ripper. Reason why is because a Thread Ripper is something that you would use for more heavy rendering or if you do any kind of 3D rendering, any type of heavy rendering that you do, I would highly recommend using a Thread Ripper CPU. Now let's take a look here. A Thread Ripper CPU, they typically have many, many cores. This is only for workstation purposes mainly because I would say this is not really necessary if you're building a game in PC. Of course, the price seems very, very high as it is now because in 2021, a lot of these prices shot way up. But that's not the point here. You just want to know how to build a PC or build a shopping list to build your PC. So the very first step I would take is Remember that you got this, say if you decided to purchase a 3990X64 core processor, if you decided to build on that, you need to know exactly what kind of socket set you have. As you can see up here, it says STRX4 socket set. And as you can see here also, it's 280 watts. You also wanna have the power supply calculator open. So that way, if you decided to purchase this 3990X, you can also put it right here in your uh, calculator, AMD, and then you can simply just go down to Ryzen Threadripper 3990X, and that will automatically calculate the wattage from that. Of course, you can always manually calculate it if you so choose to, but I always personally like to use a power supply calculator because you always have to add variables such as if you decide to add fans and so on. But instead of building a shopping list just for a thread ripper, I kind of want to go onto the more generic side of things because more students and more gamers will not need this much power. And if you think you do, believe me, you don't. You're just going to end up wasting your money. And there's many CPUs that could actually outperform the Ryzen Threadripper in gaming. So let's look at more CPUs that are meant for that. So we're gonna go over to CPUs here and a really good example to use is AMD. Say you want an AMD 5990X. That's a great example. Currently, of course, as you can see, it is out of stock, but they do have an awesome combination one. This will knock out two birds in one stone. Most CPUs do not come with cooling fans. You will need to purchase a cooling fan such as this. This is a AIO for the CPU. So of course you can purchase this to make it easier. But say you decide to get a 5950X, you click on here. As you can see, this is 799. 99. As you can see, the prices are a little bit high, especially now compared to what it was last year. But if you were to build a 5950X 16 core 3.4 gigahertz socket for AM4, please remember that number because you're going to need this number for the motherboard. So otherwise, it will not fit in the motherboard of your choice. You got to make sure that it fits socket AM4. So that's where what we'll do next. So go to your power supply calculator and go to Ryzen 9 5950X. All right, so the next step we have to do is after we select our CPU, we gotta go for the motherboard next. So for the best motherboard you can think of, you just have to simply go to components, go over to motherboard, and then go to AMD motherboards because this is not a, this is obviously not a Intel processor. So go to so go to AMD motherboards, 
And as you can see here, the first thing that pops up, I don't know if it's the internet cookies or not, but the very first thing that pops up is an Asus ROG Strix B550E Gaming AMD AM4. That's the key word, AM4. That is the same socket. That simply is the same socket for the CPU, so you know it fits. The really important part is you have to know exactly what you're looking for, especially what you want from a motherboard. So if you want USB-C, make sure it does have USB-C. This does feature it and it says front USB 3.2 type C. So it does have it. It also mentions it has addressable Gen 2 RGBs and Aura Sync. The other part it also has is PCI Express 4.0. If these are all great signs for you and purchasing this motherboard, then this is the one you want. Of course, they give you a nice warning here that you may need a BIOS update, might require for the AMD Zen 3 Ryzen 5000 series CPU. And the very reason for that is because this is a little bit of an older motherboard. All right, you have to make sure you go to the right socket type, go to AM4, click apply. Now this is where it can get confusing. You'll see chipsets, you'll see form factor, you'll see manufacturers and sellers. So of course sellers kind of speaks for itself. Chipsets are a little bit more complicated. Chipsets go by newer models. If you don't know that, that's okay. And I'll show you a, a trick on how you can find a newer chipset easier. All you have to do is go to sort by and go to newest to oldest. That will sort out the newer chipsets. As you can see, they have the X570s, the B550s, 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 and they got some newer B450s. Here we go. How about we go for this Asus ROG Strix B550X? Yeah, maybe that's the one you want. You know what? It has Asus Hyper M2 and it has Gen 4 cards. It features USB-C. This has everything that you want. And look at the speeds, the kind of RAM that this motherboard can take. That's also really important. You want to look a little bit deeper in it. As you can see, you got AM4. It's ready for 5000 series. It tells you right there. So that's going to make it way easier. You can see that the P it takes PCI Express 4.0. It does have one PCI Express 3.0 slot in it. And has all two PCI Express 3.0 slots in it. Um, it does have DDR4 as M2 sockets. What else does it feature? Um, you can see it has Kodak for really nice sound as or lighting. As addressable and that's if you're in the RGBs this is the kind you want to have because it features two RGB headers and it tells you right there has a chips zone chipset zone or a lighting so everything looks pretty nice it has heat sinks everywhere especially down south bridge it has an AIO pump header ready to go let's see the backwards that's also a really important feature um, as has type C in the back as two USB 3.2 gen one ports and has one USB 3.2 gen two front panel connectors. So maybe this is something you're looking for. You're not looking to max out USB 3.0 because face it, most of the stuff you're going to be using is going to be using USB 2.0. Your mouse doesn't need USB 3.2. Your keyboard doesn't need USB 3.2. Let's go for this. Let's go for the Asus rog strix b550 xe gaming wi-fi motherboard so now you know the motherboard that you want so you in order to purchase this motherboard all you have to do is make sure you add it to your cart here we want to have this motherboard ready to go just remember you have to go back to your power supply calculator tab and when you do make sure you add the motherboard that you want most motherboards are ATX depending on your build. Now, they have different types of builds for motherboards. Most of them are ATX, which is the universal motherboard that fits in a regular mid tower case or a full tower case. Now, they do have other form factors such as mini ATX or they have another form factor called EATX, uh, which is something bigger 
than a regular ATX. They, they do have different form factors, but most of them will be ATX. Just make sure you look at it and match it to the case that you want. So this is ATX, you know it's ATX. So all you have to do is go to power supply and go to motherboard and you know it's ATX. So right there, bam, you need 175 watts already. So you know that from the gate. So the very next step I personally like to look at is the RAM. We know the kind of motherboard that this is. So exactly what kind of RAM will this take? And that is very important. So you go to ROG Strix B550 and it should have lead you right into the page. There it is. It's a beautiful looking motherboard, right? And we want to make sure we treat it great in the first place. So in order to do that, all we have to do is go to support here. And then all you're going to have to do is go into CPU and memory support. Now, it, of course, it tells you all the different informations about CPUs here. So we want to go to memory. And now this is what you're looking for. Now, let's say you want to go a little bit lower on the uh, you don't want to max out your RAM. Of course, overclock it can go to these speeds, but say you're not overclocking it. You just want to start it just off of 3200. So you got your RAM speed. You know your motherboard takes four slots of RAM, as most gaming motherboards do. So you want to make sure if you want to get 16 gigabytes of memory or you want to get 32 gigabytes of memory, make sure you do four by 32 gigabytes. So let's do that. We're going to search that. And it should give you a nice breakdown, a smaller list of exactly the kind of RAM that you need. So all you have to do in order to get exactly what you're looking for is say you want to go with G-Skill. You want to get this one right here. Now let's say you want 64 gigs right here. Copy it, go into Newegg, paste it in. And there it is. That is the one that you are looking for. And just make sure all the specs match, especially the timing 16, 18, 18, 38. So let's see, we got 16, 18, 18. All right, it matches. You know that this works. It is $329. Now you also want to go into the power supply calculator here. And then now you want to also add your random access memory. So you're getting 32 gigabytes of DDR4. And that is four. 16, 18, 18, 38, 16, 18. Okay, that's correct. So as you can see, it's four 16 gigabytes, a total of 64 gigabytes. So we're going to change this over to, you want to go over to random access memory, 16 gigabytes by four. That brings up the wattage to almost 200 watts right here. Now, the very next step I usually like to look for is the SSD. Before we get off of here, let's make sure we add it to our cart. That's what we want. We go back to ROG's Strix B550XE, and now we're gonna make sure, we're gonna check out what kind of specs this runs. So you don't wanna get an overpowered NVMe for your motherboard, cause you'll just end up wasting your money. So we just wanna make sure what kind of specs and what kind of NVMe that this will fit. This can take up to, it supports up to PCI Express 4.0, which is good. That means you can put a, uh, you can put four NVMe PCI Express 4.0 in there and it shouldn't have any issues that should run the operating system perfectly fine. And this also has M2 2242, you know, yada, yada, yada. It has that as well, but those are only 3.0. So, if you decide to go for a M2 slot here, it only supports one PCI Express 4.0, make sure you don't purchase more than one. Just buy one PCI Express 4.0 then, and then the rest just purchase PCI Express 3.0. Otherwise, you'll just be wasting your money and you won't see any improvement unless you decide to upgrade sometime in the future. So as you can see here, you can, it has a Hyper M2 X16 Gen 4 card. How, how creative is that? That's a pretty, pretty cool idea. So 
Um, you can even purchase this on the side if you so choose to. But hey, if you it's if you got the money to spend more, that's all power to you. But not everybody does. You just want to go for a very good NVMe 4.0 for your PC. So all you have to do is go back to components here. We just go into SSDs, click into it. Now we can go the best way to go about it. We can go latest PCI Express Gen 4 NVMEs, SSDs. And let's say that this is the one you want to get. It's only $230, which is really not a bad deal. It's about one terabyte, which is perfect for you or you can get a 500 gigabyte but i mean it's a 500 gigabyte difference especially if you're running your os out of it i would suggest using a little bit bigger storage than you would like you don't want to keep managing storage and erasing stuff so uh let's say we go pci express gen 4 we know it can fit one so this is the one we want to go with we will add to cart bam all right, so next we go to power supply calculator here, and now we know we added one NVMe. So we're gonna put one terabyte right here, and now it requires only 210 watts of power. You see, it's really not all too bad. It's not that terrible. It's not as crazy as it sounds, but now you know you got most of everything you're almost there you're almost done shopping for your pc now time for one of my favorite parts is finding the gpu what kind of gpu do you want let's go nvidia well it's impossible to find any 3080s because they're all sold out thanks to the miners and scalpers out there but instead we're gonna go into components and we're gonna go into video cards and we're gonna go into desktop graphics cards and we're gonna look on exactly what kind of gpu we can get for our pc that's a little ridiculous tense oh my god that's terrible don't buy that but anyway um let's say we go for nvidia here and we want to get some rtx 20 series let's apply that oh my gosh that is ridiculous that's almost that doesn't make any sense well it now is not a great time to purchase any of these. I suggest do not purchase any of these graphics cards at these prices. This is a little bit out of hand right here. A lot of these components honestly are. But the point is you want to build a shopping list and that's what we're going to do. So you want to get a 2060 RTX 2060 gaming overclock. And this is the one you want. It's sold and shipped by cent now. This is more fits your budget. It has six gigabytes, 192 bits of GDR6. All that for 800, come on. Are you serious? But anyway, uh, this is the GPU that you wanna get. And say you do purchase this. Hopefully for not this price, but say this is the one that you wanna get. So you wanna go to your power supply calculator and you're gonna go under select chipset nvidia and we're gonna go 20 series right it was a 2060 super i believe no it's 800 for a regular it makes no sense at all all right let's go 2060 right here now you need look how much of a power jump that is it jumps up to 420 watts of psu power so that's how much wattage you need for your PC so far. So usually my rule, of course, as I mentioned earlier, is you wanna at least go over 100 watts of power. There's also other things that you also have to consider, such as fans, case fans, RGBs, anything that you put in. So always rule of thumb is you need at least another 100 watts of power in your PSU. So 420 plus 100, that's 520 watts at the minimum. And also, we didn't even get the cooler yet. I'm tripping here. We didn't even get the cooler yet for this. Let's look for a AM4 cooler. So we go to fans, PC cooling. And in order to get a cooler, whether you choose liquid cooling, that's not what we're looking for. This is not that kind of build. 
but let's say you want to get a CPU fan, a very simple fan. You want it for AM4. We're going to apply that here. It has up to 250 watts of TDP. And this is the fan that you want. This is it. This is the fan. For say we want this Be Quiet 250 watts TDP Dark Rock Pro 4 uh, CPU cooler. And we're going to look up the specs here. And more than likely, it's probably not going to tell you exactly how much wattage or uh, voltage this takes. But typically, it's like around 8 to 12 volts. Around something like that. But uh, you just add another 5 to 10, just say. Which it typically is because they don't really take too much power and 250 watts ddp is more than enough for that cpu so that's what we want we're gonna go with that cpu cooler of course it all varies on the kind of cooler you have and if you go aio or some sort it's gonna vary in different wattage because of different types of fans or pumps that you will be using on your pc so if you so choose to make sure you calculate that wattage as well but we're going to just make a pretty basic guide but you can kind of figure that part out for yourself now so now we know we need about 425 just say you end up getting i don't know four or five case fans we want to add just say about 15 watts to it because of that and then you add 100 watts of extra power so you want to have at the minimum of 540 watts from a PSU at least so far but in order to make sure of that let's go get a case for our PC so we're going to add that to the cart here and let's go to components and now the very next step you need a computer case computer cases uh, let's go gaming cases yeah that's more like it yeah that's more like it let's get a gaming case so we want to go atx mid tower that is the most common style they hardly don't have full towers like they used to but let's say we want to go atx mid tower this will work perfectly for your motherboard because we know it is atx it is not micro atx it's not mini itx it is atx so it will certainly fit in this case but let's say you have a feature you want to have like say USB C up in the front make sure you add that to your list here front ports this one features usb 2.0 3.0 3.1 and c and audio this one has 3.0 through this is let's go with this one instead uh i don't know why anyone would want 2.0 in the front but i certainly don't but anyway, let's go to USB 3.0, 3.1. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about here. Let's go with this Lian Li LAN Cool 2 Mesh RGB case. Look how beautiful that thing is. It's tempered glass, has the front ports just like how you want it. This is pretty decent of a case here. Yeah, let's go with this one. So we know. We want to go here and we're going to go down and make sure it has everything that you want for a case. Uh, say if you want to go for a AIO, make sure you have a full 360 millimeter radiator that you can fit in there if you want. Or if you want to have a 240 millimeter radiator, that's right, it said radiator. You want to make sure that your case is able to have that space in order to fit a 360 millimeter radiator or 240 millimeter radiator depending on the ai oak that you so choose so we, it does come with three case fans as you see three by 120 millimeter 1300 rpm argb fans i got a sure i'll cover here on the bottom for your psu um, it has SSD space on the bottom if you, if you so choose, but it is a really nice design. So let's say we so choose to go with this instead. So what we'll do is we'll add this to our cart. Now we calculate it pretty much correctly. And now we're down to our very last components, which is the power supply. So all you have to do is go into your menu, components, power supplies, and now 
we're going to look for the power supply of your choice. Typically, I always recommend going 80 plus gold or platinum because or titanium. Any of those are probably the best choice you can have for a PC and usually they do last. We know that our PC does recommend uh, 550 watts at the minimum. So we'll select these two. Hopefully less 500 comes up. We don't want this. We're going to unselect these because that's no good for us. There we go. That's more like it. Now we're going to look for the best one for our personal choice. Let's go 80 plus gold certified, 80 plat plus platinum certified, titanium certified. That all sounds good to me. Let's save a little bit of money here. Instead, let's go EVGA, Supernova, 550, 80 plus gold, 550 watts, fully modular, which is awesome. Fully modular just means you're able to plug it in it is not just routed into the back of the power supply this is very useful especially when you want to power up especially if you so choose to upgrade your power supply or your pc in any type of way you can and like i said you might need not need the 100 watts but at least you're covered if some reason if for some reason your pc is maxing out you have that safe space that safe cushion so you want to make sure you have that extra power. Don't cheap out on the power supply because I promise you, you will regret it and you won't feel like taking apart a power supply to put back in into your PC. So let's go with this. It's only 74 at 99 and you're practically all done. You're almost there. Of course, you got the whole other accessories. You can buy more case fans. You can buy more RGBs. Whatever you do, you have full choice from there so when you have your list when you have your cart it should look something like this it says 1205 right now because the only thing i am missing from this cart is the gpu i did not add it to to the cart because that is ridiculous i will not pay that much for a gpu as you can see it has everything that you need to build your pc and it is much cheaper already than purchasing a pre built pc if you found this content very useful make sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the big wonderful fan band make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more and also make sure you follow my twitter handle right here for all the newest updates fan band guys if you have any questions at all make sure you put it down in the comments down below because i will answer as quick and fast as possible when i can thank you guys so much for watching this is chris mizo signing out